Hello everyone! Today I'm making a bit of a different type of video. Uh, many of you may be struggling with your polyphasic sleep adaptations and I wanted to make a video where I discuss the issues with comparing polyphasic sleep adapta adaptations to dieting in order to lose weight. The purpose of this video is to help you understand why you may be approaching your polyphasic adaptations wrong and this will hopefully allow you to rethink your strategy so that you're finally able to adapt your schedule. Stay tuned! Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So let me first start off by explaining the similarities between a polyphasic sleep adaptation and a diet. Uh, when you want to start a diet, you don't just shoot willy-nilly and like start eating only bananas. More likely than not, you won't be able to keep it up due to your willpower breaking down. Um, and if you actually manage to stay on your diet for a long time, you'll start noticing issues with lack of nutrients. The same can be compared to starting a polyphasic sleep schedule. Like, yeah, you could get lucky and choose a diet or a schedule that fits you perfectly without any issues, but the safest bet is clearly to reach out to knowledgeable people and ask them to help you out. Either that, or you browse the internet and find those diets or sleep schedules that look cool, then you read more about them and finally choose to follow it. So, so far it's the same for both diets and polyphasic sleep schedules. Then when you are on your diet or your polyphasic sleep adaptation, you are sure to follow the rules. You know, you don't overeat, you don't oversleep. If you're on an intermittent fasting schedule, you eat during your allocated feeding block. You might sometimes break your schedule and overeat or oversleep, but you just keep pushing for the better. You read up on what to expect to happen at those hurdles that are expected to happen. Uh, which is very similar on both polyphasic adaptations and diets. Your willpower will likely get in the way and you need to persuade yourself to keep going. You know, one thing that I've personally uh, been thinking about is the difficulty of adhering to a diet. I mean, think about it. You need to be on top of your game and keep your willpower up around the clock. If you go 12 hours against your desires to eat snacks or what have you, but you break your diet for only a split second by eating a snack, you've essentially failed. Now I understand that there's a difference between allowing yourself to eat one cookie and a whole cake, but the premise is still the same. In order to actually lose weight, you need to keep your calorie intake lower than your calorie expenditure. If you go your whole work day by eating only lunch, but then your stomach is rumbling when you get home and you stuff your face with ice cream and candy like there's no tomorrow, you've lost and you've only suffered in the process. This can also be compared to polyphasic sleep adaptations, where you need to stay awake when you're, you aren't supposed to be sleeping. If you stay awake during the whole time when you aren't supposed to be sleeping, but then oversleep for an hour in the evening, you have pushed your progress back a lot. It's not a nice situation to be in for sure. And it's the same thing here. You will essentially have suffered for the whole day or possibly even longer for nothing. So I can compare polyphasic adaptations to diets with another thing too. It's probably best to lose weight or cut the time you sleep gradually. If you try to go all out in one move, it's going to be much harder. Yeah, the time will be shorter for you to reach your goals, but that only applies if you actually succeed. More like, the more likely case is that you will fail and you have to start again. And with polyphasic sleep adaptations, you actually have a recovery period to go through, which drags out the process even more. So try to reduce your sleep gradually instead. And if you're interested in learning more about this, I've made a video on the gradual adaptation methods in the past. And I will link them in the description of the video uh, so that you can check them out later. And I highly encourage you to do so. So regardless, now I've spent a bulk of the video explaining why polyphasic sleep adaptations are similar to diets. So where's the discrepancy? Well, a fundamental difference between these two processes is that is the ability to pause your progress. If you stick to your diet for two months 
and then Christmas rolls up and you lose track and overeat, your progress will be taken a bit back, sure, but you will still have lost those two months worth of weight. If you go through a rough period and you increase your calorie intake to compensate for your depressed feelings, it's all good. You've still lost two months worth of weight. When you feel better after a week, you can resume your progress. Yeah, your willpower will probably have been impacted a bit, but your physical progress will still be intact. But that's not the case with polyphasic sleep adaptations. If you go through a rough period and return to monophasic sleep for a few days, boom, your progress is undone. You will have spent weeks or months for nothing. And that's a fundamental difference between these two activities. And I don't want to alarm you too much. Small slip-ups are still permitted. It'll just halt your progress for a little while. So don't lose all hope if you take an extra nap before your exam or something. It's fine. Everything isn't undone. But the same type of physical progress will not be registered as with diets. And it's not like you've been on your schedule for a month and then you return to monophasic sleeping from like 8 to 7 hours, 7 to 8 hours a night, and then you go back to your polyphasic adaptation and those months or weeks of progress are still there. It doesn't work that way. In order to be able to adapt, you need to stick it out in one go. And that's possibly why polyphasic adaptations are so much harder than sticking to a diet. You need to have such good willpower that you're able to succeed with it. Because once you start, there's no chance to take breaks. You need to power through the whole thing at once. Okay. Hopefully I made this clear for you. What I encourage you to do is to improve your willpower before you start your adaptations so that you can have a lot to do and so that you can look forward to your goals. Be sure to be the one in charge of yourself. Learn to complete tasks that might be a pain in the ass for you. Exercise regularly to keep your spirit high. Try to avoid constantly switching to your phone when you're working. Start implementing strategies to increase your productivity. I believe in you and I believe that you will be able to do this. You just need to have your head in the game. Okay, in the beginning of the video I mentioned asking for help from knowledgeable people and the best place to do that is the Discord. I've linked it in the description. And it's a place where new and experienced polyphasic sleepers meet to help each other and to learn. The link, as I said, will be in the description. So please join it to improve your chances to adapt. Learn from people who have come before you. Don't try to pave your, the way yourself when it's not necessary. Anyways, this was a bit of a different type of video uh, than I usually make. If you have good tips for how people can improve their willpower and self-control, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, like it, and please subscribe for more videos in the future. Take care, and remember to nap well, people!